once again, welcome back to the flat. Okay, right, good afternoon everybody, once again, welcome back with Plot. Thanks for all your comments after last week, yeah, and uh, as I say, the strawberries are just romping away, getting great. The sunshine that day, fantastic, um, this must be the first day, although yesterday wasn't too bad, it was cloudy all day, but since the beginning of May up here in the North East, it's been chronic, and of course, lo and behold, the focus of getting the right, the sunshine's come up over the day, so uh, it's time to crack on. I've got loads to do, loads of planting out to do, but uh, the beginning of this week was just horrendous. Rain, rain, more rain. So the ground's well soaked. So I'm going to crack on with the start of this video. Um, and uh, what I say is I'll get the brassicas in this week. So I'm going to try and get them done tomorrow. We'll finish this video off with them. But today, uh, one of my most important jobs is to, uh, is to deal with some of the pests. It's not only the pests that you want to invite in, it's a pest that you want to keep out. I've got two or three different methods that I use. I've used them for years. And uh, with these greenhouses, they, of course, they're full of tomatoes. I'll just um, I'll tip it down. I'll let you, let you have a look at the, um, the toms in there. They're just romping away these. They're getting great. And of course, now's uh, the perfect time to start putting a bit of um, putting a bit of feed on them because they've got plenty of feed in the pots, but the first trusses are on. And no doubt within a couple of weeks time they'll have uh, small tomatoes on so i'm uh, i've just got to wait for them to come on and then we'll start there uh, we'll start giving them uh, plenty of feed with the old um, the, the old juices that we have in the barrels and of course the uh, the automatic vents work no okay uh, no it's starting to open down <coughs> but um as i say the pests some will like to invite in we can stick signs on our windows on our greenhouse to say come in there's, uh, there's vacancies, so we've got to entice them in. And of course, uh, here's one of my favourite ways of enticing them in. There was a comment online about um, somebody had posted pictures of the flowers uh, and to name them. And of course, these <coughs> the calendula, or calendula as people call them, they're a fantastic flower. I grow them every year. I like to go by the old fashioned name, pot marigold. And they're absolutely, it's such an easy thing to grow. And uh, as a tree of them there, I've got a few trees of them over there. And all I use these for is to bring up what some people would call pests. I'll call them my friends. Get these in. Not only these, you can use the ordinary marigolds to put the, old, the small marigolds. You can put them in the pots and that'll keep your white fly away. But the pot marigolds, the, the old fashioned ones, I like to use these to bring in the hoverflies. And of course, what can I do without them, the old hoverflies, the old pollinators? If you don't like to leave your doors open like I do, I mean, Roger comes up first thing in the morning, these doors are opened up, so it's letting the fresh air in. As I say, keep changing your air, never get any stagnant air in our greenhouses. The vents are always open, and of course, if you've got some nice flowers like these, like you say, the calendula, and they're going to attract the birds, here. they're going to attract the, um, the, the pollinators in, the birds, the bees, they'll all be coming in here floating around and seeing bits and pieces and of course that's where you get the best pollination so I'll, uh, I'm just going to use a couple of these up well look there we go in there that's a first class little plug plant and I'll, all I'll do is at the, at the far end of the greenhouse here I've got the uh, where I put the two fish boxes I've got a cucumber in there and I'm just going to put a couple of these I'm going to take them out of the pots now I've got, I always like to keep a pot of these for myself for the greenhouses we only want a couple in because they grow quite big. I'll get them up off my t shirt, otherwise, I'll be getting the bulk of them when I get in. Um, now, we have it, it's a couple of nice little plug plants, and I'll stick them in the far end of the greenhouse here. Put them in there, just next to the cucumber, and give them a good water in there. A nice watering in, and a couple weeks' time it'll be full of bloom. And of course, 
they'll be inviting in there. Some people call them pests. We love them, the hoverflies. They'll come in and they'll do a pollinating. They'll be in amongst the plants, the flowers. Well, these have only been in uh, two, three weeks now, and already they've doubled in size. And of course, a lot of them, they've got some cracking suckers on them. Now, them, as I say, what you can do with them, you can put them in peat pellets, uh, like I've been doing with dahlias, and you can start yourself off little plants. I've done it last year. I done it at the beginning of the year, I took some suckers off and I rooted them and you get a they'll the root as easy as anything. Plug plants, I just put them in a, a small pot with some soil in, damp, plenty of drainage, but excuse me, put them on the side of the pots and just keep them misted each day, keep them out of direct sunlight, and uh, they'll root away and you'll get a first cast uh, tomato plant from your suckers. They grow really strong, so uh, if you do lose any, and then you've always got a back up. Um, it's never easy to say that you, that you will lose plants. I mean, we've got two full glass houses here and uh, touch wood, we haven't lost any yet. Different story down in the big polytunnel. We've got tomato plants in there, but as you know, uh, the sides are all wide open, the net's wide open, and there's a big gaping hole in the roof. There's been water dripping, cold water of the rain been dripping through there under a couple of the plants. So I think a couple of them have been there, are going to be susceptible to the cold and uh, they might be a bit slow in coming on, but if we do lose them, I've got plenty in the other greenhouses just to replace them. But uh, that's it. But in here, perfect. Both greenhouses are absolutely chocker and they're rotting away. So I'm, uh, I haven't had much time to spend in here. I'm still busy potting off in the, the 100 foot greenhouse. I'm potting chilies off. Um, I've been potting off tomatoes. I've been potting off bedding plants. Uh, loads to do. And we're just, just trying to get through them a bit at a time. But uh, hopefully, as I say with this video, I just want to point out a few helpful hints for you that will uh, keep your greenhouses nice and clean and uh, give it, give your, um, give the pests a bit of a uh, incentive to come into your greenhouse. Well, I didn't think it was that cold with the door being open because uh, it's pulling itself shut. So I might have to adjust that, um, I might have to adjust that a little bit. I know down home I've got it just fine. It opens up at 60 degrees. When I would open the door up and it'll just easily come back down. That might want a little bit of attention, the, um, the automatic vent. I'll spray a little bit of WD-40 on it. just seems to be clanging a bit. But uh, I'll sort that out. But as I say, everything's grown fine in here. There's a few weeds at the bottom of the pots and that underneath. What I like to do is I like to go right through them. Once the first truss is on, I like to go right through all the pots and that. Take all the bottom leaves off. All little bits and pieces, even the, um, the ceiling leaves, pull them all back up to the first truss and then leave them. That, make, that way you can get in at the pot and take all the weeds out and of course give them that first tying up. Uh, which by the end of next week they're, they're going to need it. But uh, they're absolutely fantastic, lovely strong little plants. I've got quite a selection in here. I've got some uh, I've got some giant orange at the back, I've got some ace along the front, I've got some gardener's delight here. And I've got some Thai grilla at the back. Now both greenhouses, they've got different sets of tomatoes in. I've got Money Maker over on the far end here. And I've got Marman, which is a big beefsteak one. Uh, Roger likes a big beefsteak, so I've had to put a few of them in for him. But uh, yeah, we've got quite a selection of tomatoes. And uh, and of course, what I like to do is, uh, as I say, is um, invite the pests in. What people call them pests, I don't. I like to get the hoverflies and get the bees and the all the other bugs, get them, that's helpful to you for your pollinating, get them inside your greenhouses and the way to do that is to put some plants in that they'll, they'll thank you for and of course, what's one of the main ones, Calandula you can put the small marigolds in if you want which I do, I dot in and out the polytones and that just keeps your white fly away but they're, they're the best ones for bringing in them hoverflies flies and your pollinators, that's what you want Speaking of pests we're going to do the Brassica Zamora and of course I've Cut some rhubarb over there, take down home. I'll keep the rhubarb leaves, and that'll, that's for one of the main pests on your brassicas, but we'll do that tomorrow. Um, as I say, I've got, to, I've got to set the bed up, I've got to put the hoops on, get the net ready, because my first brassica has the sprouts going out, and I hate them being left uncovered, because we've got a lot of pigeons around here. Um, so as soon as I put the sprouts in, put the canes in, the nets will go over, and we'll have some... Um, as soon as I put them in, we'll have some rhubarb leaves and what you can do, you can make yourself a garlic spray up which is a, uh, one of the great ways of combating 
your slugs and other, any other things that might be um, on the ground ready to devour your young sprout plant but we'll do that tomorrow um, as I say oh I love this time of year and, uh, that, sprout, that smell of the tomatoes growing away nicely fantastic chuck a block around here the, the beds and the borders you just kind of move in here um, but uh, we're getting there um, we're getting there slowly but surely there's, uh, there's trayfuls of um, petunias dahlias <laughs> petunias a load of cabbage along there there's pot leeks cabbage sprouts over on the back there over at the far end there's giant leeks and onions still to be planted out but uh, no doubt we'll catch up we'll get there eventually as I say the other greenhouse you can see through there that's absolutely full of tomatoes and all but both doors are wide open and uh, as I say this is a this is the best time of the year to rare uh, is to make full use of that sunshine just get them doors open get the fresh air in and let the plants feel the benefit of it it's just a gentle breeze here just blowing through but they're absolutely first class little uh, tomato plants there and as i say they've got the first truss on there now so now's the time get them flowers in get the bugs in to get them pollinated and you get a first class crop of tomatoes right okay so i'm there uh, Back out. I'm in the shade here. It's uh, there's a couple of big trees over in the next next guy's garden, there and it just gives out a little bit of shade. It's absolutely boiling hot in the sunshine, so I'm uh, I'm enjoying myself up here. As I say, I've got um, I've got some more chilies to pot off over there, and I'll uh, I'll walk through the greenhouse way in a couple of seconds. Okay, see you again soon. Okay, right. Well, totally different story inside here. It's absolutely boiling hot, and that's uh, that's with the side nets on. These are our indoor strawberries, um, well, the ones that's in the bottom polytunnel. As I say, there's a couple of them. Not doing too grand. There's a small one there. It's just a little bit yellow on the leaves. And, uh, but that's just due, due to the fact that there's a big gaping hole in the roof above. Um, there's been a lot of water dripping down on top of that one. But the rest of them are looking pretty good. And that's even for them being nets on the side there. The fresh air's blowing straight through here. Uh, we've got the last of the cabbages to dig up tomorrow there's about six there so we'll have uh, me and Roger will have one each and we'll give you that four way um, plenty of leaves go to the chickens and a couple of neighbours will get a nice cabbage off with because I need to get these fellas in these are me uh, Idaho Garden Girl commented uh, last week on a video well these are me Virginia tobacco plants I've just tried them this year for a for a change and uh, no it's not the deep south it's not down carolina this is the uh, old north shields in tiny and we're going to grow the, the tobacco plant and this is a virginia one so i'm going to get these planted out where the cabbages are but uh, i just need to do a little bit of prepping on it of course i need to check the soil to make sure i've got a, i've got my numbers right i might have to add a bit of lime to it because the cabbages will soak everything out of the, the soils take all them salts out and that's the whole idea of putting cabbages in the clean your soil up fantastic yeah uh, and like i say last week roger was going to plant the billy lamb onions out there they are got two two nice rows there growing really well um now bev and roy from wolverhampton commented on last week's video sorry bev about they uh, keep chopping me head off um i'm not quite used to this phone yet but uh i hope i hope you got the I hope you got the drift, uh, the, the drift of what I was doing on the uh, on the grapevines. Now I haven't managed to get back right yet. I've been that busy. Um, but what I had to do, I, I chopped. As I say, I usually leave about a foot between each branch. As you can see by this middle branch here, I haven't cut any off here yet. I've been leaving them for another week or two, but I, I will go right through it. Probably in next week's video, and I'll cut all these down, take all these spare bunches out, because there's far too many on there. Even up the top there, if you if you look up there, there's absolutely tons on there. So let's like space them out. Cut one out, cut the middle one out, and leave them two. Cut that one out, leave that one, and just work your way along. Um, there's some there. Uh, there's some lovely bunches of grapes on there. But uh, if you left them all on, then of course they would be here. Uh, they'd, they'd just be suffering. But um, what we'll do is we'll, we'll cut as many as we can off and leave just enough to get a first class crop uh, so there's me, uh, as I say, there's me me Virginia tobacco 
I think I've got Dave coming down there on Monday. He usually calls in a bank holiday, so no doubt he'll appreciate one of them plants or a couple to take up. I've got three varieties to plant out. Uh, Virginia's going into here, the Burley's going in the bottom poly polytunnel, and the, uh, the Perique's going in the 100 foot greenhouse. So I've three different varieties to choose from. No doubt a few of the lads that have a, I think they have a, a roll you up on the plot, they'll, uh, they'll be calling in and see how it goes and see how it, see how they grow. But uh, we'll keep you all updated on that. Okay, so I'm going to uh, knock off for the time being because I've got a, um, I've got quite a bit to do tonight. I'm up here watering down. This is my main job of an evening. Get all the water down, and then what we'll do is we'll um, what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll start with the brassicas tomorrow. Okay, so I'll see you in the morning. Bye for now. Okay, right. Well, good afternoon, everybody. I've managed to get back up here Friday afternoon, and of course. <laughs> I've been promising to get this video finished for the last fortnight. It's been absolutely manic up here on the plot. Uh, what I did do, beginning of the week, I managed to start putting me, me frames up. Uh, I've got my sprouts under the net in there. Of course, I've just got to get a few um, electrician's ties just to put the uh, put the tires back on them. But uh, as I say, I let you get the brassicas in around about the first week in June, end of May, beginning of June. Of course, it's been perfect. After the last couple of weeks of freezing cold weather, the rain and that, so we've had a uh, I've had a lovely week of sunshine up here, so I thought, well, it's the best chance I've got. Let's get stuck in. And of course, when I'm when I'm dealing with um, when I'm dealing with cabbages and that, uh, I always like to grow them singly in their pots. Uh, like I say, you can get all the get all the rubbish taken out of them, no problem. Get a nice solid plant growing, plenty of root in it, and uh, that's what I like to do with mine. Get a get a really good solid plant growing first. If I can see what's happening in the video, I'll be able to just try and move it around a little bit. Don't think I'm actually. That should be okay. Right, as I say, what I like to do is get a, get a real good plant, small plant, individually in its own pot, and uh, it works great. And of course, one of the other little tricks, uh, you see there's first cast root ball on there, absolutely great. And what I like to do is the day before, uh, take a few leaf, rhubarb leaves up, take some rhubarb down, split them down the centre, because all you need is half, half a leaf, and I'll like just... Let it sweat down first, and you'll find it's nice and pliable, nice and soft to wrap around the entire root, like that. Dig your hole as normal, and plant it well down. A lot of people tend to leave their cabbages sitting up on the top, I never do. I get them right down, really firm them in. And that way, you do get any wind through the night. It's in nice and solid. I like to give it about a foot between each cabbage. These are autumn cabbages. So we can just let these grow on once again. Get your, your rhubarb leaf. And what this does, it keeps away a lot of your pests. You'll get them um, cabbage root fly and you get the dreaded. Um, Cabbages here is a goal. Once again, firm them well in, any weeds away. There we have it. I'm getting two in for start off. And don't forget, just give me. I'll get a couple more in later on because I want to. Uh, I want to show you the pot leaks. Um, just wait away along the row. Get them in. Wrap each each one individually with a little bit of rhubarb and uh, it'll be fine. It uh, keeps away most of the bugs and of course like I say if you've got if you've got first class plants to start with then you shouldn't have any bother. Uh, you're going straight in tomorrow, we'll get this whole line finished and then what we'll do we'll put a couple rows of leaks in over the far side. I've got some uh, leaks in up here. I'll uh, I'll show them when we're in the greenhouse and I'll show you what I like to do with them before I plant mine out, okay? 
Yeah, I'll get myself. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll get myself back in the greenhouse. What I'm going to do here when I finish off, I'll get two rows of cabbage in there. I'll probably get another row of cabbage over there where the sprouts are. And I want to put two rows of pot leeks down here. But um, the pot leeks are a different kettle of fish altogether. We'll, uh, what we'll do, we'll put the lines out, we'll make the holes, we'll put a drill in with a rear. Uh, an old broom shank, anything like that, dibber. Ideally, you want to try and do it when the soil's a little bit moist. Uh, this is bone dry, this is a bed, but we might have a bit problem putting the uh, putting the dibber in and making the holes. But the idea is to go along the line, right along the line, dibbing out all your holes and then just drop your leak into it. it was a, there's an easy way of doing it, or there's a hard way of doing it. Uh, I like to do it the easy way. So we'll, uh, we'll sort that out once we get into the greenhouse, okay? Okay, right, well, it's a tad warmer where it is outside there. That wind's just starting to come in from the west there. It's making it a little bit cool, but um, here ho, we're plodding. As you can see, we're just absolutely chocker on the benches. We've never stopped for about a fortnight. What we're doing, we've been digging potatoes out. Um, out the bottom polytunnel, we've been digging some of the jazzy out. Absolutely fantastic. As I posted on my Facebook page the other night, we've had some crapping, cracking potatoes. They've just been small. To medium but they've been absolutely beautiful and that's what it's all about the taste uh, absolutely marvelous so as we're digging taties out i'm finding a space to put straight in because we've got courgettes we've got cucumbers we've got melons we've got marrows we've got tobacco cucumber we've got everything to plant that we had but we need the space and especially in here if i just turn this around and i'll show you the, the potatoes that's in here and of course we're in the 100 foot greenhouse at the moment um this is a Winston potatoes, they're nearly, they're nearly touching the top of the baskets. So when we we'll start digging these out, they're going to be absolutely marvellous. The strawberries in the next tunnel there, unbelievable. I'm having some, uh, some cracking strawberries coming off here. What I might do is just have a little walk in there before we knock off. And I'll show you. Now with the pot leaks, as I explained, you put your line out, do exactly the same with the cabbages. Go along your line, and I'll only leave out four inches spacing between each leak. I dibble, dibble a hole in, just use your dibber, press it in. You can put a marker on your dibber if you want, four inches. I normally set mine at six inches. Um, if you've been following me from the beginning of the year and I showed you how to, how we plant our pot leaks and uh, I keep telling you, by the time we come plant out in June, they're up to 18 inches high and there, there we have it. There's our pot leaks here. Absolutely fantastic. They're all pencil thick, really cracking strong leaks. And it's only in a, a small pot like that. Easy enough to grow. If you look after them well, you've got a good compost. This is our own compost that we made up. Yeah, the three, two, one mix. We set the seeds away in late January, early February, just in the cool greenhouse, not no heat, and just let them grow until now. And this is a the result. They've had a couple of sprays. Um, they've had a couple of sprays of um, Epsom salts. Uh, and their uh, baking soda and that's all they've had they've had no feed whatsoever what feed is in the pot is what we put in the compost or bone meal when we add that and um, we made the mix up in january so that goes to prove it absolutely fantastic now we uh, a couple of comments online uh, last night which caught me eye um on dean roberts uh, back garden uh, veg pot they were asking about the leaks and what to cut and what to trim now I do this every year with mine and the only reason I do it is because it saves the birds. The birds are murder for going down and pecking. If they, if they see tops of leaves they got sticking out of holes, it's just a natural curiosity to go and peck at it. Think there's bits of hay and stuff like that. If they're nest building, they'll pick at them and they will pull the leaks out of the holes. Because what I never do, never with, with the pot leaks, I never seal the holes up. So what I do is I take my leaks out and that's a perfect example there. And all, I, all I'll do, if I can just bounce that in there, I'll hold them leaks like that, till they're more or less all the same size there, and I'll just go across here with the scissors and cut that all that top off so they're all nice and straight. And just make sure you've got all the leaks there, and there's some shorter ones there, so we'll take it to there, we'll just cut straight across here with a pair of scissors so they're nice and neat, and then when we tip them up the pot, we'll do exactly the same thing with the roots. I'm not going to tip these out yet because I'm not going to plant until tomorrow. But uh, I might 
add it to the next video. What we'll do, we'll tip them out, we'll give it a good shake, get as much soil as we can off the roots, and just dip them in the bucket of water. And of course, with the, with the weight of the water, give them a good swishing round, the weight of the water, when you pull them out, you'll find that the roots are nice and straight, nice and long. And once again, I go across with the scissors, and I, I cut about, I leave about two inches of root on the bottom of the pot, on the bottom of the leek, just cut straight across them, the same as what we're doing with the top, cut straight across the bottom and leave about two inches of root. And that way, when you dibble your holes, you'll find it much easier to drop your leek in. And that's all you've got to do, just drop it in. I see people dibbling them in and filling the holes up, I never do it. Uh, just drop them in and then just follow around with a uh, watering can, tip into the hole, um, and, and that'll wash the roots down to the bottom and then they'll start growing away. And uh, after a couple of weeks, you'll see them start to make new leaves. And when you go around with a hole, just keep them weeded. And that's when you start filling the holes up. And uh, you'll have a perfect bed of leeks. I usually put about three rows in, uh, three rows of leeks. I'll get probably get 30 in a row, 30 or 40 leeks in a row, says so 120 leeks for us in the winter. And plus we've got our big leeks over there, our big show leeks that I got given. I'll be sticking them in, so it's, it's all for the pot. There's nothing for sure this year, it's all for the pot. So that's what I'm thinking about. Me belly in the kitchen, the good old leek soup, uh, leek and ham soup. Uh, there's lots of things the way it cooks with them. So, you know, they're a, they're a great winter vegetable. We pray these as much as what we do with sprouts and with parsnips for the winter, because we love our stews, our soups, and uh, it's a great way of uh, using up a bit of the land. So we'll pop them to one side anyway. Tomatoes, now there's loads of comments online again. People are there, there's disasters out of heaven. You know, tomatoes are such an easy plant to grow. What is hard is just getting it, getting your timing right. That's the first thing. I do mine in three crops. Getting your timing right, getting your heat right, getting your watering right, getting your air condition right. It's all them things you've got to bring into, into account. If you walk into a greenhouse and it's too hot for you, it's too hot for your plants. If you walk into a greenhouse, it's too cold for you, it's too cold for your plants. It's as simple as that. They're the same as us. They feel exactly the same. You go into, into a greenhouse and pour a bucket of cold water over a plant. It's the same as somebody coming behind you and pouring a bucket of cold water over you. Wow, that's your first uh, reaction is to shake. And that's what you're doing with your plants. You're giving them a shock. And of course, you give them a shock. And it can stop that growth, it can hinder that growth and put them into a, a semi-state of hibernation to just stop growing them. And that's the worst thing you can do for a plant is to give it a shock. So, you know, I always say when you're watering your plants, fill your watering can up and put it in the greenhouse for the next day. Never forget, our water butts now, we've started using my water butts. But in the winter, when I'm doing seedlings, we never use the water butts because of the pathogens that's in the water. We tr try and clean the, the butts out. But we don't let water stand any more than a day or two because you'll be surprised at how quick the diseases can build up and uh, you start pouring that in your compost and that's a that's a no-no straight away you're pouring pathogens moles diseases straight on top of your, your seedlings and it's going to cripple them straight away so get your nice fresh water out of the top and stand it in your greenhouse ready to water your plants or your or, as i say this time of year we're, water, we're using more water butts but water butts are filled up every day so it's more or less, it's, it's only a day or two, it's, it's starting to lie, but uh, we'll let you use as fresh as what we can. Nice fresh water, good same temperature as what your plants are, and what you'll end up with is plants like these. Now this is me last, this is me last sown. If you remember, we sowed these cold greenhouse about four weeks ago. And these, of course, are my favourites. These are the Yelsa Craig. Now these are the plants we'll take down, we'll start the video off next week. Um, because I've got a few chilies to, to start on, I've got cucumbers to start on, I've got um, all the um, all the other soft fruits and uh, soft vegetables to plant out next week, so we'll probably do it in the tunnel. We'll try and make it a, an hour long video if we can, if you can uh, if you can keep glued to the screen for that length of time. But um, these are my plants and this is the last song we made. We've, they've only been potted off a couple of days. But they're absolutely first class and you can see how they're growing. Look at the suckers on there. And it's an easy enough job just to go around and just nip, nip them little suckers off. I'm not there. I'm not one of these that sits and watch a tomato plant until it starts growing suckers. 
I'll just let him let him go for for a couple of couple of days or a week before I even attempt to start. I never take the suckers off the top because that way a lot of people got get confused and that sometimes they nip the top out and what happens is your plant's blind. You'll end up with one truss and that's it. What you can do if you do nip your top up by mistake is let it grow on and if you see a sucker let that sucker grow and that sucker will, will go up and form your main plant. It's a bit um, controversial but I've done it myself. You've accidentally nipped tops out and then just keep your eye up for a sucker growing, let your sucker grow up and that'll, that'll take the place of your main root or your main stem growing upwards. But once again, such an easy job. There we go, just nip them out and that's as far as I go. I never touch the top ones, I like to leave them because as I say, it's, it's quite an easy job. And of course, I'm always pointing out um, if you've got a good plant, if it's been well grown, I'll just pop that there. These are on trays, by the way. These are on big black trays. Yeah, and that's how I water. I water everything from down below. There was a lady on last night had been watering our, um, our grow bags. Now, grow bags, it's a no-no for me. I used them years and years and years ago. And uh, some very poor results. Fair enough, a lot of people's got um, concrete paths and that, and they, they can't do anything else. But I'll always... Uh, maintain that pots are the best Get even small pots you can put small pots in trays and give it a good tomato plant good amount of water and a good amount of feeding in that small pot and it'll grow into a decent sized plant but there uh, is a seedling you say fresh as a daisy nothing wrong with them whatsoever so that tells you the plant has never had no check whatsoever there's the suckers growing away there just nip them out as far as they can and that's a perfect plant. That's the Elsa Craig. Now that's going to be planted. What I'll do, I'll take six down. I've got a dozen here. I'll take six down home. I'll put them in my greenhouse if I can find space. I'll uh, move some of my plants around. I'll put six inside. And what I'll do is I'll bring them out through the day, put them on the patio in a sheltered spot, and take them back inside in the greenhouse of the night time for a week, a full week. And then the second week in June, which once again, we're spot on what timing. They're just starting to show a couple of roots there now. So by, as I say, a week's time to a fortnight's time, that pot will be full of root and it'll be perfect for planting out. And then we'll put them outside in the back of me in the spare land and we've got two long trays filled with my compost, plenty of manure, and they'll go in there. And they'll be well sheltered. We'll just put up a couple of wigwams up. If they're cairns, make a few wigwams and uh, that'll be them. Once again, you see they're on trays. They get water from down below. Shipping over myself here. Cucumbers. Absolutely fantastic. Use a telegraph. I've got telegraph. I've got telepathy. Um, I've got market mo. I've got Wisconsin. Wisconsin. I've got about six, seven varieties. So easy to grow. The secret of cucumbers. Keep them misted. Keep them moist, not wet. Keep them moist. They water from down below in that trees. They need that heat when you first start them off. So I start them off down home. I've got a little bit of heat on down home. Uh, but as I say, as soon as my um, as soon as my temperature hits 60, that window goes open and the door goes open. The fresh air. Always remember, plenty of fresh air in your greenhouse. Don't let the air go steal. I do it every morning. First thing, as soon as I get up downstairs, open the door. Go up and get changed in my cup of tea. Come down. Check the heater, see what the temperature is, shut the door if necessary. I mean, the heater's been switched off for about uh, 10 days now from down home. Just towards the end of end of May, we had that really cold spell, the wet and cold spell. I had it on for a few days, and then I, I turned it off after that. But uh, now it's the temperatures are up at 9 o'clock in the morning when the sun gets over the roof. Uh, my temperature shoot up to 60, 70 degrees straight away. So I open that door and open the vent up, make sure the vents open up. Get all that fresh air through and that controls that temperature. If it's too hot for you, it's too hot for your plants. Exactly the same with the cold. Too cold for you, too cold for your plants. You know, just you learn as you, as you go along. Um, as I say, loads of comments be online, so I thought I might as well try and get up tonight and get this um, get this video finished. And what we'll start off next week, um, when I'm planting them tomatoes, these are me, these are me, um, me big American peppers. We'll deal with these. I've got some bigger ones over there. We'll, we'll start with the tomatoes, 
and we'll go with the peppers and we'll go with the chilies. We've got loads of work to do with them. We'll start nipping the tops out because with me growing them on the benches, I haven't got a great deal of height. Yeah, I'm not going to plant them in the borders. If I find I've got a little bit of space left in here, I might put a few of um, the long jaw chilies as they grow quite tall, but I'll not nip them out. Yeah, but the little bell peppers, I'll nip them out so they'll start branching and they'll give us just a nice sized plant to stand up on the on the beds here, up there. As I say, it's been chaos this last couple of weeks. We've just me and Roger trying to catch up as much as we can. I was out here last night at 7 o'clock weeding out the bean trench, the runner beans and the French beans. Yeah, we're just trying to catch up and catch up and catch up. We've got that much to do. It takes me a full hour to get from the start of the 100 foot greenhouse here, all the way around through both tunnels and up the back bench and the two top tables to water everything down. It's got to be watered every night. So it's a full hour's work I've got before I even start in the garden. So I managed to get little jobs done in between and uh, as I say, we've been so busy, we haven't managed to uh, get any videos online. But uh, we'll get our cabbages, the brassicas finished, we'll get our pot leeks put in. And then next week I'm, I'll try and start early. We'll put the tomatoes in first and then we'll come back up and we'll start in the chilies and the peppers um, and anything else that's going on. But as I say, it's, uh, it's pretty manic at the moment. Um, everything's, uh, everything's up a height. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to leave it on the stand. And I'm just going to slowly walk through here and give you an idea of, um, of what's going on here. Oh, these are uh, these are all my tomatoes. These are the giant orange. Uh, these are ace. I've never grew ace before. Um, these are all ace. So uh, just to try, because I like to, I like to put about six or seven varieties in. I think I had about ten varieties in last year, but uh, just too much. So I'm just cutting back slowly, a bit at a time. Um, and if I like a tomato, well this this tunnel here is chocker. There's just some of the that's some of the sweet corn I've got to pot up this weekend. I've got the Wisconsin, they're all cucumbers. They're the ace, ace tomatoes, it's a third lot. And the rest of the these are courgettes, green courgette, yellow. Um oh there's all sorts still to be done. Another big bunch of cucumbers along the far end. Some late cuttings of dahlias still there. I've got them to put up. I've just been busy tying all these up. There's the first of me back here. That's uh, Golden Virginia. And they're absolutely romping away. Um, I've had no feed or anything. The only feed I've had is what's in the soil. But they're, they're doing great. So, And uh, there we are. If you can see them. If you've been following me all the way through on my, on my strawberries. And that's the crops you can expect. And of course, not only the crops, look at these little babies here. Look at all them runners coming off there. Fantastic. And they're going to give us some cracking plants for next year. But if you want to follow us on our strawberry trail, then you're quite welcome. We'll show you every year, step by step. Um, I still haven't gotten around to starting this vein yet. I'm, uh, I'm not far behind. I've, uh, I don't know which way to turn at the moment. But I think next week I'm going to crack on with this and try and get all this vein cut back. Uh, I'm sending a couple of veins out, so there'll be a couple of people getting a parcel in the next year too. So when you do get a parcel, don't forget, just pot it up. You don't have to pot it up in a big pot. Just a six inch pot will do and uh, grow it on. And it'll be ready for you for planting out the end of this year. But I'll, uh, if you get us on my messenger on my Facebook, I'll, uh, I'll give, you some, uh, give you some tips. But yes, these are, uh, these are what Albion strawberries. And they're absolutely monsters. Oh, we're going to take these off tomorrow morning and I'm going to drop a, um, a basket load in for Roger. I'll keep him, keep him happy. I've got the grandson up from uh, Oxfordshire, or Lincolnshire, and he's, he's visiting this weekend. So no doubt he'll pop up and he wants some sunflowers to take home. Well, I've got them grown for him. But uh, yeah, it's going to be a full weekend on. Tomorrow, I'll not get as much done because we'll be out with the grandsons, uh, me, the missus, and the, the two laddies. So we'll, we'll probably miss them or but Sunday I'll be back to normal. I've got loads of bedding pans to get shot of yet. So there's a couple of friends coming up for theirs and that creates a bit more room on my uh, on my bench. So hopefully by next week we'll start and see the wood for the trees as they say. But uh, I'm gonna knock off now. I'm gonna do a little bit more work before I go back down home tonight. I've still got some watering to do, watering down. Loads of stuff on the back bench needs a really good drink. Um we could do with a drop of rain, but uh 
I'm afraid the last time I did a rain dance, I got a right bollocking. <laughs> it poured down in wheels <laughs> for about uh, for about a week, so I'm keeping my dancing shoes off for night. I'm just gonna I'm gonna wait and see if these thunderstorms come over from the west. I know they've been threatening for a couple of days. It's so humid up here, but um, if we don't get them, then we'll just we'll just plod on with with what with the wahoos. Rain water is so fantastic. You know what I mean? You can't uh, you can't beat it, but. Hey ho, if it doesn't come, it doesn't come, we'll just carry on with the hose. But anyway, for now, I'll, uh, I'll let you go. I hope you enjoy the vid. I've showed you around. Give you a few tips on the on the cabbages and the um, and the pot leeks. I'll be planting my pot leeks out next week, so I'll, uh, I'll probably add that to the video. And uh, we'll get um, the outside tomatoes done first. I think so. We'll start the video off down home. I'll show you my greenhouse down home. Absolutely chocker. But uh, everything says fresh as a daisy. Growing great. I'm really pleased this year. It's uh, about a cracking start of the year, so I hope it carries on. Although we're still cautious, me and the way for the for the lockdown, you know, we're still uh, we're still doing road. We just uh, well, local friends up here, and that's it. So from the plot again, once again, hopefully next week I'll do an hour vid. I'll do a real long one, and uh, we'll get stuck in a few of your questions and a few of your queries that you've been asking online. Help you as much as you can. So if you can't wait for the videos, I know it's been a long time in coming. If you can't wait for the vid, get one more Facebook page, just say Jeff Foreman on the plot. Just send me a friend's request and we'll get you signed up and you can chat to us every night. Uh, on most nights I'm on the I'm on the internet. Um searching out there uh, bits and pieces, new new plants, new tricks. It's uh, it's amazing what you can get on there. But anyway, that's for this video and uh, I'll see you all again in a week's time and we'll crack on with um as I say with the early tomatoes, outside tomatoes, and we'll um what soft fruits, what courgettes and what cucumbers not will start on them and of course the, the peppers and chilies. Okay, so I'll see you all again next week. Ta-da for now then.